In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the built-in pathfinding A star for Godot on a grid. So let's go. All right, I have a blank project here. I'll first import the tile map that I want to use. You can use it too, link in the description. All right, I've imported my tile set. Let's make the node now. Let's make a tile map. Expand this. We want this to be a new tile set. Click on where it says tile set. You want to keep it as a square grid. And for my images, these are 64 by 64. Next at the bottom, click where it says tile set and drag the image over. We do want to automatically create those. So we can go ahead and draw our grid here. I will use the purple tiles to denote walls. And these green ones are the walkable areas. So make sure you're in the tile map tab to start drawing. You can also hold shift to click and drag to do that, or use the box rectangle tool to fill in a large area. I'll do that first, and then just place in some random spots for the wall. Make sure I'll go back to the pencil mode. All right, there we go. I have my grid. Now let's add a script to our tile map. Click on attach script. I'll leave the name as default. Make sure to deselect the tile map by clicking in this blank area. So the main way that we can use pathfinding is by using the built-in A star grid. So let's make a variable to store that. And we want to use A star grid 2D dot new. So if you want to look at the docs for this, remember you can hold control and click on that and it'll tell you everything about it in here. So first, let's make a function where we set up the grid. So I'll put that below ready here. When we use the A star grid, we want to set the region size. So this is just number of units large. So in our case, when we click on our tile map. My grid is seven across and six tall. So region expects a rectangle or rect 2i, which means rectangle, that's 2d, that's an integer. So we can say equals rect 2i, and we specify the position and then the width and height. So it's 0, 0 is the starting position. And then as we said, the width was 7, and the height was 6. Next is the cell size. Make sure to deselect the tile map, or else it thinks you're trying to do actions in that. Cell size, this one is a vector 2i. Remember, the tiles are each 64 by 64. This doesn't make too much of a difference in our case, but this would help you get the coordinates of each tile. After you change some of these properties, then you have to tell the grid to update. It doesn't automatically update all of its settings after you do these. You have to say a star grid dot update. Now let's make a function to actually follow the correct path from point A to point B. Let's say show path. Let's save this to a variable. So this is it. var path taken is equal to a star grid dot get id path. This will tell you the coordinates of the cells that you're going to, and that's within this range. So for example, this cell here would be zero zero, and we'll make that our starting point here. And let's set this as our ending point. You can see in the bottom left, this is 6, 1. So we just provide those as the starting and stopping point. So those are vector 2 i's. I said we would start at 0, 0. And we're going to 6, 1. Now to see this in action, let's set the cells that the path is following. We want to set a few variables when we're messing with the tile map grid. So first, let's make a constant for the layer that we're working on. We can call that main layer is layer 0. Also the main source ID is 0. Remember, the source ID is based on this down here. It's whatever source ID this is, which you can get from hovering over any of your tiles. You can see it's source 0. It's the first image here. And to fill in our path, I will use the red. So in my case, this is atlas coordinates 2, 0. Let's note that down. Let's call this path taken atlas chords vector 2i of 2 0 now let's use these at the bottom so when we show the path let's go through each cell 
in this path. So for cell in path taken, then let's set the cell. The layer is a main layer. You could have this on a different layer if you wanted. It doesn't totally matter. The coordinates that we're setting, it's whatever cell we're looking at currently. The source ID is the main source ID. And the atlas coordinates that we're using is the path taken atlas cords. Let's copy that in here. And we don't need to fill in the alternative tile because we don't have one in this case. Now let's make sure to call these functions inside of ready. So first we want to set up the grid. And I'll call this code down here. Then we want to show the path. Let's run the game. First we have to save this. And run it. And I will select this current scene as the main one to run. There we go. So it followed this path. But if you remember, we had a wall here. So we have to tell it what actually classifies as a wall and what is walkable. And also it moved diagonally. So let's fix all of those. So first, let's tell it what the walls are here. So one way that we can do that, let's say we're going to have a lot of solid objects in our game here. Maybe I'll have some other object, which also counts as solid. So what we can do on the side, in the custom data layers inside of the tile map, inside of the tile set section, we can expand that. Let's add one here. So the name will be is solid. For the type, you want to set that as a bool. Remember that's boolean, which means something that's either true or false. Then at the bottom here, go to the tile set section and let's select things that we want to be solid. In my case, that's going to be the yellow and the purple tiles. I will hold shift and then click this one. So now they're both selected. In the custom data section, uh, this is custom data ID zero. That's why I chose zero. We can check that box here. So now we have a way of checking in our code if something is solid. I will deselect the tile map by clicking this blank area. Go back to the script section. Let me just expand this here and let's make a function to check if a spot is solid. We can call this is spot solid. We have to tell it which spot we're checking. So that's spot to check. And that is a vector 2i. So returns a boolean. Remember, we're putting these arrow annotations it's technically optional in Godot, but it will give you autocomplete in other spots, so it's helpful. And also this part, adding types, that helps. This will give you autocomplete when we're writing inside of the function. So to check if a spot is solid, we can say get cell tile data. And this is on number main layer. And the coordinates that we want to check is whatever was passed in here. So that's spot to check. Let's get the custom data. So get custom data. And then we have to say what the name of the data that we want is. We have this called is solid, and we want that to match. So to avoid any uh, errors, let's copy this name. And then we can also store this in a variable because we don't want to have magic strings in our program. So we can make this a variable for is solid, and that's just equal to the string is solid. So this will give us autocomplete. So we can go back down here, get custom data, the is solid, and we just want to return this value. So return if it's solid or not. Now inside of the setup grid section, let's go through all of our cells that are used and check if it's solid. So for cell in get used cells on the main layer, that'll just give us a list of everything that was used here. So we'll just go through all these coordinates and give us the tile data. Let's check if that spot is solid. So for now, let's just print that out to see that this is working. So print is spot solid, and we're checking the cell here. And to see if that worked, we can make this be prints, and then you can say print the cell. This will be the coordinates, and check if that spot is solid. So if we run that, you can see 0, 0, and where this was an open space. Then it seems to be skipping around here, so 1, 1 is this spot, and that is solid, and it says it's true. And 2, 2 was false. Then 3, 2, and this thing's just going everywhere. 3, 2 was false. That's this spot here. So yes, this does seem to be working. So instead of printing that, let's tell our A star grid that this is solid. So what we can do, we can say A star grid dot set point solid. And we can say set the cell. And then we can just pass in this function that we had because this 
function here, set point solid, that takes in whether this point was solid or not, and that's what this returns. So if this was false, then it's going to set that point as not solid, which was the default anyway. But if it was solid, it'll set it as solid. And by the way, uh, this function here, as you can see in the docs, calling update is not needed after calling this function because it automatically updates. So let's run this. You can see now it took this path here. So let's say we don't want to have it going on diagonals. We can fix that too. Right above where we update the grid, we can say a star grid dot default compute heuristic. So this is how it computes how much something costs. So higher cost means you don't want to go there as much. And we want to say this is equal to a star grid dot heuristic dot Manhattan. So that means it's judging things based on uh, Manhattan distance. Manhattan distance is basically, instead of being able to move on diagonals, the distance from here to here is two, because you have to go one, two. You can only move horizontally and vertically. And we can also set to diagonal mode. Dot diagonal mode is equal to a star grid diagonal mode never. That means you can never move on diagonals. You can see now it correctly takes this long path here. Now let's say just for testing we want to go to a different spot. So instead let's go to this spot here which is 2 2. We just have to change the ending point here instead of 6 1 in my case in the show path. There we go. And to show some animation here the way that we can do that right after we set the cell we can say await and then git tree dot create timer and let's say let's wait 0.2 seconds after we move to a spot dot timeout so it's going to wait for 0.2 seconds and then it will move to the next spot so let's put this back just temporarily so we can look at a longer path there we go now one thing you might have to watch out for let's say i had done this for my region size from negative two to negative two might look like nothing's going on but it's actually just walking outside the grid and if you want you could keep adjusting the grid here so let's say i wanted to make this spot be open and maybe i wanted some far away goal point like over here and you have to watch out because you don't want the pathfinder to be able to walk outside the grid so you can add some walls on the outside if you want let's try this one i'll tell it to go to six six and we run that yep it's trying to go outside of the grid so we don't want that so let's make sure our region is large enough here we can set this to be 10 10 but as we suspected it goes outside the grid so again let's make sure to add some walls if you don't want that happening i will just set all of this to be a wall technically it's not going to try to walk up here but uh, we can add this if we want so you can see that gave some errors it still works but technically you need to tell it oh yeah you can have this part outside of the region yeah of course if we're starting farther back we have to make these larger again so we can go to 1616 because it's width and height not ending positions yes there we go in our case since part of the grid is outside of the bounds a trick you can do hold shift click and drag while you have the mouse selected then you can move this whole section over by a little bit there you go of course now it's trying to start in the wall so we can fix that here and there we go it seems to work now so i hope you've learned a few things about the a star pathfinding in Godot. if you have any questions you can ask below or join the discord other than that thanks for watching